subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to be the first to get all my latest writing tips and videos. And remember, be original. Be a writing original. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video of real time writing. Also, shout out to all my writing originals out there. Now, this is the snake story that I was writing and continuing to write. So, before we get into it, I just want to show you the actual like writing layout that I, you know, when I sit down and write. Um, I also wanted to take a picture of my chair because I had before a very uncomfortable chair and it was like falling apart, it was rickety. Every time I sat on it, like it'd make all these squeaky sounds. So I had to get a new chair because that was really distracting me, you know, making me uncomfortable. And I couldn't really write that long because my back was hurting because of it. And I did a video a while ago talking about like the perfect writing conditions. And I can't believe I forgot one of the most important little pieces to, you know, to everything, you know, writing in the perfect conditions is you gotta have a comfortable chair. So I went out and got this chair and it's a thousand times more comfortable and I love it. And because of that, it helped me to write longer and more and all that. So here's my writing setup. Um, it's just a binder, which again, I had another video showing you this uh, writing trick, which um, I love this. It helps me so much. Um, I just have a binder with, uh, you know, loose leaf paper in there. And um, I just have a pencil, a big eraser, and, you know, a sharpener. And I have a lot more pencils, like, off to the side, so it's not just, like, one pencil. But I'm constantly sharpening it, of course. So, you know, whenever I mess up on a page, instead of, like, rewriting the whole page or ripping it out and saving it, and, you know, you can check out my other video of how bad my notebooks actually got before I did this trick. If I mess up on a page, I just rip it out you know, crumble it up, throw it away, and then insert the new page, um, uh, you know, a blank page in the proper order, and I just continue. And if you can see, to the left side, all, like, on the floor, kind of, you can see a lot of, like, crumbled up pieces of paper, and, you know, I do that a lot, because with any writer, you make mistakes, or you don't like how you write it, or, you, you know, you change your mind, or, so I have, like, a big pile of crumbled up pieces of paper. Now, this notepad off to the side is the notepad where I take bullet points and I write them down of the scene that I'm going to write. Like, whenever I come up with an idea for that scene, I jot it down instantly before it escapes my brain. And when I say like, okay, so how are we going to start this scene? Who's going to come in? Who, what is he going to say? You know, how is it going to break down? Well, I make little bullet points. I'm like, okay, so this character walks in with a knife. And then this guy, you know, says this to him. And then, you know, this happens. So it's kind of like my bullet points. And, and then whenever I incorporate them in the story and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm done using them, I just cross them out. So this is my actual setup. I even showed you, like, I left the little stories on the and bullet points on the paper to show you that... I'm actually writing something. I'm not pulling it out of, you know, the thin air. It's actually me writing, doing this in real time. So let's uh, get into the story now. So let's elaborate on the cast. Because when I first started out with this story, I didn't even have names. I had basic concepts of what I wanted the characters to be. But I actually came up with names. And again... Um, I, this might change a million times over, but so far this is the best names I could come up with. So let's get right into it. There's not many characters because it's a short story. So you got Will. He's the main character we're going to be following. He's a teen. He's frail, like an easy target. He's like a teen in high school. This all takes place in high school. You know, I wanted to keep it simple, uh, relatable, you know, so... Um, Will, he's the main character, he gets bullied a lot, and, and there we go, he's afraid of snakes, because this whole theme of the story is fear, everybody has some type of fear that they have to either deal with, overcome, and based on how they deal with it, 
changes their personality. Maybe they evolve, devolve in the end. You know, they do certain things based on that. So he's afraid of snakes, terrified of snakes. Then you got Gabe, his best friend, uh, also in high school. Um, again, this is just, you know, semantics. This could change at any time. He's skinny, but athletic. You know, whatever else I can come up with better, it's fine. He's Will's best friend, okay? Um, you know, he kind of protects Will from when he gets bullied, but he also gets bullied himself. So they're not popular. I don't want to say they're outcasts, but they're just whatever, you know? Then you got Grandpa Jack. He's like a war-torn, you know, guy. You know, he's no bullshit. He's, you know, lives on a ranch. He's like works nonstop. He's got like this hard problem that he's dealing with, taking pills and stuff. So that'll come into play. And he's Gabe's grandpa. Not Will's, but he's Gabe's grandpa. But, you know, basically they're like family with Will anyway. Best friends, they treat him like family anyway. So there you go. All right. Now Marvin, he is like the main antagonist, which means like the bad guy. He's the bully. He's like, a, again, a teen in high school. He's a football player, but he's like, instead of going with the, you know, good looking, you know, popular, like, yeah, he's popular too, but he's not the good looking jock that, you know, he wins the, what do you call the prom king thing? No, he's like this fat, slovenly, fat ass linebacker. But because he's like a football player, he's considered like he's super popular, part of the cool crowd with the hot cheerleaders. And, you know, they run the school. They're untouchable. So he's, you know, goofy looking. He has like big ears. He's, you know, he's like fat stomach hanging over his, you know, pants. But he's popular because he's on a football team and he's bullying Will and he's bullying Gabe. And there you go. Um, he's also afraid of something. I'm not going to tell you what yet. That's towards the third part ending. Oh, Gabe is also afraid of something. You'll find that out in a, you know next couple of next couple of videos. But everybody's afraid of something. Um, then finally, Liz, teen, um, in high school, she's the cheerleader. She's not like the head cheerleader. She's part of the cheerleading squad. But I wanted to give her a little bit more depth and not make her so cliche. So she's not like, she's like still a cheerleader, but she's kind of like, yes, part of the popular crowd, but she kind of doesn't want to be. You know, she's kind of like what you call new money instead of old money. You know, like she has all the, you know, quote unquote money and popularity, but she really doesn't want it. She's not a, wants to be a part of that crowd. She'll take the perks when she wants to, but... And she's dating... Now she's dating Will. She used to date Marvin. But because he's such a jerk and bullying everybody, beating everybody up, and just being an asshole, she's like, I don't want to be like a part of this fake group with the fake cheerleading girls. I don't want that. So I don't want to say she's like shunned, but they kind of like pushed her away. And she's fine with that. She's like, you know, I'm going to date somebody with a good personality who's a nice guy, blah, 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 whatever. You know what I'm saying? So that's how her personality is. So there we go. Let's start with the actual story. All right, so let's get into the story, Fade In. I want to make a quick disclaimer, though. Um, this is a pre-draft, which means it's very rough, sloppy. I just got something down on the paper. Um, and I also want to mention that my weakness in screenplay writing is writing, um, you know, character description or action description. That's my weakness. I know I got to tighten it up pull out a thesaurus, and make it, you know, way, way better. But my strengths are dialogue and story structure and, you know, character development and all that. So so just bear with me. I know it's going to suck, um, structurally at least, you know. 
So let's get into it. Fade in. Exterior ranch house day. So you know it's in the you know daytime outside, picturing like a nice ranch house. Now I describe the ranch house. Tranquil meadow, straight out of a painted greeting card. Um, with a barn style, you know, fence included, and tall grass. So you can kind of get an image of how it kind of looks like. Very beautiful. Um, so now we meet our main character, Will. So Will, uh, teen, frail, um, marches on the dirt road toward the house. Worried look on his face. Also has a lot of bruises. So bruises on his face too. Also, cats can be heard meowing. You know, you could hear in the background them. So there's cats on the, you know, um, on the ranch. So his eyes dart to the center of the lawn. Um, a small disturbed patch of grass. So he notices like out of the nice tall grass, there's a little patch that's disturbed there. It's flat. That something's going on there. So uh, Swill, uh, Will stops in his tracks and makes a beeline for a closer look. He comes across a mini crime scene, um, but no body. And so it's like, a, I'm, well, actually, it's a crime scene. I wrote crime scene of a kitten, but no body. So it's not actually a person. It's a cat. So some cat got, you know, something happened to a cat. And in the grass, only thing left in the grass is an outline covered in foamy white slime, few cotton balls of orange hair, and they sprinkle drops of blood. So you see the, you know, the picture I'm painting. And the cat doesn't have to be orange. I just you can make it what color. It's not essential to the story. So you can, and also a handful of cats uh, surround the spot all morning, meowing like a funeral. So morning meows like a funeral. So they're around, you know, feeling sad because it's probably... You know, a cat that they knew. and So I'm giving you the picture of what's going on. And, you know, you got the slimy foam. You don't know, well, what happened to the cat? How? What's all this slimy foam? What's the, you know, there's blood. So something must have happened. What's going on? So I know it's rough, but, you know, you can help me out. Uh, leave in the comments. And if you come up with ideas, help me out. And it's all good, you know. Let's continue. All right, so let's continue. Um, so, rustling of brush is heard in the distance. Now, I'm not sure how to say rustling. Is it, you know, brush rustling? Rustling of brush, whatever. Suddenly, the mood changes. All the cats are on their toes. Will looks out through the field, but sees nothing. Um, the cats hiss in distress. Hair puffs out. One by one, they scatter leaving Will on his own. Um, Will follows suit and heads back to the dirt path with a haste. So he, he's nervous. Something's going on. Um, suddenly he spots the tips of grass blades moving as something gets closer. All right. Think of it how like you see jaws in the water. You just see like just the water moving. You're like, you know, something's there. Something's coming. But you don't know what yet. Um, so Will now is, uh, is alarmed. Kicks it into high gear. Uh, toward the house. Um, he looks back and finds a large snake. Or sees a large snake emerge from the meadow onto the path behind him. Okay. So... Now we have our action, like almost right away. You just had like one page to figure out what was going on, establish, you know, and now we got some action going. All right. So now he's, you know, Will's face turns white like a ghost. 
Uh, Will screams from the top of his lungs and races towards the house. Like once he actually saw it, he didn't know what it was at first, but he was still nervous as hell. But once he saw it, now he's terrified because, you know, he's afraid of snakes. And I should probably take like a sentence to describe the snake. You know, it's a long, I said what, a long snake, a big snake. I could have been a little bit more detailed, so I'll go back and change that. Um, but I don't want to be too specific. Um, he's just like a long snake, maybe a garter snake, non-poisonous, something like that. Because I use that later in the movie, a garter snake. It's it's harmless, but it's big. It's kind of intimidating. You know, I don't know, what is it like, uh, you know, two feet, uh, two feet long? Two feet long, maybe two and a half feet, I don't know. But something like that. So uh, Will screams from the top of his lungs and races towards the house. The snake slithers after him. So all right, let's let's continue now. All right, so let's finish this um, part up, and you know I don't want to make it too long. So let's let's continue. So Will is running, right? So Will is almost at the porch. He spots a butterfly snake carcass draped over the railing. He hollers out again and zigzags around the side of the house and heads uh, to a nearby shed in the backyard. All right. The snake um, already caught up to him. Will runs into the rickety door. So he like slams into the door. He tugs on the um, handle but it's locked with a deadbolt, so nowhere to go. Will turns around, yelling for help, uh, echoes throughout the forest. Um, the snake quickly closes in, so he's about to get Will. Will has nowhere to go, trapped. The snake uh, is feet away from attack. Will is... Um, hysterically crying out in fear. Now, I kind of repeated myself. I shouldn't do that, so I probably just need to cut that out. We get that he's yelling, but okay. You know, I'm still learning, you know, learning process. Um, suddenly, a large boot smashes down onto the snake, stopping him just inches from Will's feet. The boot belongs to an elder, elderly man, Grandpa Jack. So, we introduce another character. Grandpa Jack. So, wielding a small garden shovel in hand, chops the snake's head off. Um, body violently squirming, mouth still snapping. So, we introduced Grandpa Jack. Now, right away, he saves Will. Right? So, you know, you like him, you're going to like him because he's the hero right away. And he helped, uh, you know, Will. So, let's finish this up. Grandpa Jack, now I describe a little, a little bit. Again, this is my weakness, but I'm still learning. So, Grandpa Jack, war-torn face. Um, that's the best I could come up with. But he's an old guy. But, you know, he's been through some shit. You know what I'm saying? So he freaking chopped a, a snake's head off. So, you know, he's not afraid. He's He's been through some shit. So Grandpa Jack, war-torn face. Um, Will continues yelling out in fear. So even though the threat has been neutralized, he's still yelling. He's still free. He's still free. Because the snake, I guess, is really close to him. And he's still snapping. You know, the head, the mouth is still snapping. So uh, now... Let's get into a teeny tiny bit of dialogue. Now, so we got Grandpa Jack, he talks, and underneath, I wanted to make some parentheticals where I say calm demeanor. So even though John Will is yelling his head off, Grandpa Jack is calm. This is, he's done this like dozens of times dealing with snakes living on the ranch. So he goes, Will, you're fine. You know, that's the second snake I killed today. So he's saying this in a calm demeanor. So Will is shaking, another parenthetical. I don't have to put it there. But I just wanted to 
you know, had that there shaking. He's like, just get it away from me. So you get it. He's like afraid because it's close to him. So then we ended with the snakehead snaps at Will. Uh, he jolts backwards. Grandpa Jack scoops up the head with the shovel, picks up the body, goes limp in his hand, and he disposes of the parts. Will finally calms down and fixes himself up. So that's where we're going to stop today because I don't want to make it too long and you know I want this to be fresh in your mind. Don't want to drag it on. So next time we're actually going to get into like some deeper dialogue which I'm way better at. And we're going to start with some character development um, about Grandpa Jack, about Will. We're going to bring up Gabe um, and, you know, do a little bit of character development bringing up with Gabe. So that's what I got so far. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Please, if you have any ideas of how to make it better or change things or, you know, this is your story as it is my story it's our story we collab together so until next time let's you know hope you like it thanks everyone for watching please like share this video hit me up on facebook and twitter comment down below please subscribe and hit the notification bell and also don't forget to check out my other videos and until next time remember my motto where story comes first